This is chapter 7 of Pearson, uh, Basic Chemistry. Uh, this lecture talks about the moles, molar mass, calculations using molar mass, and mass percent composition and uh, molecular uh, compositions, and as well as uh, empirical uh, formulas. This lecture is being given after work sessions that teach all these concepts by working through problems. So let's get let's get going. So let's get going. The moles, uh, atoms are so small that, that that a very large number of them are weighed and used in a chemical reaction, and that's why we talk about moles because it's the it, the, you know, the atoms are so small. So we need to we need to accumulate a lot of atoms, and we call and then to so we'll have a mole. The mole is, is how a single unit of an element or a single unit of compound is described with regards to its mass. Those are basically values you have on a periodic table, uh, which is composed of Avogadro's number of molecules. And so Avogadro found this really smart way of talking about particles or atoms or molecules. He could talk about them, and it's always 6.022 times 10 to the 23. The mass, AMU, molar mass, is, is atomic mass unit or molar mass values recorded on the periodic table represent one mole of each element. Therefore, we refer to them as grams per mole or gram per mole. In this, in Pearson's book, they tend to just say grams many times. Okay? In my course, I prefer to hear gram per mole. Okay? But if you answer questions on homework, that's a different story. And if you say grams, we're okay. But be aware of that. For compounds, molar mass of elements are summed to give a compound, molar, a compound molar mass based on the number of atoms of each of the compounds. The unit molar mass is in gram per mole. And now since we've gone through a work session, you know how to do this, right? Okay? And that's what it's telling you. So here's how we do it. We take a look at the superscripts and the atoms, and we simply count. Here in this particular example, we have one unit, one atom of nitrogen, right, or one mole. And we have three atoms or three moles of hydrogen. Since these are standard numbers, and they may be used as conversion factors. And that's what we will use them for. These are standards off the periodic table. Since they're standards on the periodic table and they refer to universal standards, we don't use these values in determining our sig figs. So here we have aspirin. C9H8O4 is used to reduce pain and inflammation. Aspirin is also used as a, as a blood thinner. Okay. Uh, here, you notice here, car the, we have, what, nine units carbon. Does everyone see that? And we have, what is that, three, six, seven, eight units of hydrogen and four units of oxygen. And that's how we count them. So we just split it up here, and we know the atoms in one molecule is nine atoms of carbon, eight atoms of hydrogen, four atoms of, of oxygen, and the moles is nine moles carbon, eight here. So note that atoms and moles may be used interchangeably. The context of when to use it is what you want to listen for, okay? So it's about the context. Follow? So be aware of that. So if you know you have nine atoms of hydrogen, you have nine moles of hydrogen. You get it? Okay? So that's a straightforward question. So if you say, you have 12 moles of, of hydrogen, how many atoms of hydrogen do you have? 12. Okay? Follow? That's how it works. Okay? So here, the superscripts in this formula, C9H8, shows you that we have these, ratio, these numbers shown on this slide. And since we've gone through it in our, in our work session, we won't spend a lot of time on this. But just note that one molecule, the total molecule, is C9H8O4. That is the total molecule. Be aware of that. That is that one single unit. Okay? All right? That's what it looks like. This isn't carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Okay? This is aspirin. Got it? That's composed of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. How many atoms? Nine, eight, and four. How many moles? Nine, eight, and four. How many molecules? Nine, eight, and four. You get it? Now, the term molecule is going to be used interchangeably too. When we get to Avogadro's, you'll see how to differentiate those. So here, since that's the case, we can look at any of these ratios we wish to talk about if it's in this compound. 
any of these ratios. So I have nine carbons to one mole of this, eight to one, four to one. How many moles, by the way, how, what's the, what's, how many moles of carbon to hydrogen do I have? Nine to eight. You get it? So if I had on this, if in a problem I needed that, I would simply use it because I, moles to moles I can use, grams to moles I can use, moles to atoms I can use, moles to molecules I can use, but I can never use grams to grams, okay, in, a, in these types of calculations. So here we have one to nine, you can invert them and use them as you need to. We get the molar mass is the quantity in grams that equals the atomic mass of that element. So we look on the periodic table, we look at the values, and for this class we, we're going to report to two decimals because the author of this book tends to use two decimals. So we, we, that's simply by way of agreement. Okay? And so this is where we get our molar mass. All right? Yes? Uh, when you said we can use a periodic table on the test, does it have to be the one you handed out to us because that doesn't have the molar mass or anything on it, or can we just print one off that has everything on it? Everything on it. You're gonna have, you're gonna, you will have a periodic table. I'm actually going to try to order some and get them to use. But most, it looks like a lot of you have found some around somewhere. You can scan it, whatever you want to. Maybe I'll scan one in and put it there if you don't have one. If you don't, I'll tell you to use your book. If you only, if you agree to just stay on the page where the book is and don't flip the yeah, book. Yeah, it's in the front, very yep. front cover. Yep. So. I just didn't think you were going to want us to keep our stuff As long as you don't use the book, okay. we'll be fine. Okay. All right, good question. So, we got that? So, here, that's molar mass. And we know molar mass is in what? Moles, grams per mole. Okay. Here, we have lithium carbonate, which is a salt. We know it's lithium and carbonate, right? And we know how to name it that because in naming salts, we don't tell how many of the atoms we have or how many of the moles or molecules we have, right? We simply name it. We know it's lithium because lithium is, in, is an alkali metal in group 1 on the periodic table. And we know CO3 is, is composed, is a molecular... Uh, 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 ion, okay, a polyatomic ion that's composed of carbon and oxygen, which are both non-metals, therefore it makes a really nice salt. So we have this salt, which is used to treat bipolar dis disorder. And for those who need this med, it's a very helpful thing because that helps balance the body firing. That's, that's straightforward. Some bodies that don't have what it takes to produce it, you take it, it helps you fire, you're good to go. Here, this slide is, going, is an example of how we do the calculations and how we use them. We know we have lithium. Where do we get this value from? You know, right? Periodic table. This value? Periodic table. Periodic table. Note, it, note here. So we combine them now with the right ratios by doing, aha, our good friend, dimensional analysis, right? Okay? And notice, notice here, so here he has that number of grams, it's composed of that number of grams, that number of grams, and that number of grams, we combine together, we get the total molar mass of that number of grams, and we know in our class we like for you to, by discipline, report our values of what gram per mole. But this is, actually, this is correct, because here you notice it said molar mass equals. Does everyone get it? Okay. All right. The reason we like to report gram per mole is particularly if you ever do research, you're not going to be reading statements. You're going to be looking at units. Okay. If you work at Dow or any of the large companies, you're going to be reading units. Okay. You, know, you do the same thing in the hospital. Right? You're reading units. How many milligrams, how many microliters, how many, et cetera, et cetera. You're reading units. Okay. So this is how we calculate it. This table shows you how to interconvert between it. Anyone know this table came a what? Law, right? Right? It came from understanding dimensional analysis. You understand dimensional analysis. You can memorize it if you wish. Okay? But as long as you can perform a dimensional analysis, I never ask you to show me this table. Okay? You now know how to do dimensional analysis. We've done it in the work sessions. The moles of a compound are related to its mass in grams by molar mass, gram per mole. 
to the number of molecules is related by Avogadro's number, which is 6.023 times 10 to the 23. So, in any problem, well, in most problems, and certainly ones you'll see in, my in this course, if I ask about molecules or atoms, you think of who? Avogadro's number. You're going to have to use it somewhere. But don't automatically start writing it down. Do the dimensional analysis, and if it fits, you use it. Don't automatically start saying, where do I use Avogadro's number? Do the dimensional analysis, because that's how you're going to be graded moving forward. Okay? What about percent compositions? You know how to do these, right? Given the mass of an element of a compound, we can calculate the mass percent of the composition. The mass percent of an element uh, in a compound is the mass of the element divided by the total mass multiplied times 100, and the 100 is there simply to, to convert it from a ratio to a percent. Okay? And this is used for betting odds. Okay? Okay, that's your ratio. It's no different than playing the lottery or, or watching for the stats in the basketball game. They went 9 for, nine for 23 or something. That's a good night shooting, right? Okay? Percent times 100. And you can rearrange these equations. If you have trouble rearranging me, these, let me know. We'll help you through it. So the order of pair is due to propyl acetate. What is the mass percent composition? How many units of carbon do I have in, in this? <coughs> How many moles of carbon? How many atoms of hydrogen? Ten. How many moles of hydrogen? Ten. How many moles of oxygen? Two. You get it. What's the molar ratio of hydrogen to oxygen? Ten to, two. ten to two. Don't try to do any fancy arithmetic. It's ten to two. That's it. Don't reduce it. Just leave it. What's the molar ratio of carbon to hydrogen? 5 to 10. So if you needed that, you would write 5 over 10. Get it? Okay? Very good. But in this case, we're determining the mass. So we have moles. We run, the, we run it through, as we've done already in the work sessions. We run these through. As a matter of fact, we had almost a problem exactly like this, did we not? Really close. And we get this as a molar mass of many grams, but you report that as what? Gram per mole. Very good. Uh, so here... So to do the percentage, we take this percent, we take the mass of carbon divided by the total molar mass, percent hydro the mass of hydrogen. Where do we get this from? Periodic table times what? Ten. Does everyone follow that? And this is periodic table times two. And this is the total C5H10O2. We run the calculations and we get 58.800% carbon and for in this course and be aware in this course only it may be different in other courses I'm okay with these reported to round, to round whole numbers if you report the decimal you're not going to lose points or anything like that either okay all right empirical formula we've done this in the in the work session right is the simplest whole number ratio of atoms in a compound. In this class, we're, we're not showing you how to get to the empirical formula. Okay, we're going to take that for granted. But there are some problems in your homework that you will have to work through. Okay, and I'll teach you how to do that step by step in the book. He does a very good job with it in, in the textbook. I am not going to go over that in here in any detail unless someone needs me to. Okay, but he goes over it really well in that. So here, we know this is the empirical formula for this is CH, CH2O. This was divided by 5. So everyone follow? And it gave 1, 2, and 1, and we don't write 1s, right? Unless we're doing it for teaching purposes. So this is how we do it. This is the actual molecular weight. This is empirical. You simply grew it 5 times to get here. Here you reduce it 5 times to get here. We've already done these, and so I think you're familiar with it. Any questions? We're okay? Here we show you an example. The, molec the, molar, the molecular formula is the same or multiplied times empirical formula. So here we show you that acetylene and benzene have the, have the same empirical formula, C and H, but benzene is a ring grown six times. This is, a, is not a ring. 
but it's twice that. Here, ammonia and hydrazine, does everyone get it? These are examples of the type that I would look at these. These are the type that I would be asking you when we test on, chat on this. You'll see examples like this. I'll ask you which is which. How do you know? You take nitrogen plus three hydrogens, you add it up, and you take nitrogen twice and four hydrogen, you add it up, and you do the, the arithmetic. Simple ratios. Are we okay here? Okay. What is the pure performance of C4H8? Let's answer that one. Go. The second one. CH2. C, C2, CH2. You just looked at it, right? That's it. It's that straightforward. What about here? C, C8H14. Which one? First one. Yep. Four and, four and seven looks right. Uh, which is our possible molecular formula. Which a possible molecular formula? Molecular formula is the empirical formula multiplied. Okay? That's what a molecular formula is. But it may end up being the exact same as it can be the molecular form, it can be the empirical formula or any multiple thereafter. So what do we have here for this one? Two and three. Two, two and three. three. So two is how many times? Twice? Two, yes. And here is what? Three. three. That's it. That's how you do these. Okay? All right? This is empirical formula. So here we've shown you the answers. So those are the solutions. This brings us to Avogadro. Avogadro said you could count anything and you would discover that it has 6.022 times, 6 times 10 to 23 particles or, at, okay, or atoms or units. If you did pencils, that's what it would be. If you did cans, that's what it would be. Okay? That's Avogadro. Okay? He standardized the number of molecules. It is, it is the simplest, it is the most complicated, simple discovery ever that he figured that out. And it works every time. It's one of those things that makes a scientist jealous that they didn't discover that. But it's that straightforward. He was somewhat of a math, mathematical chemist. Okay. All right. So that's what you have. So Avogadro's number. So we can use Avogadro's number in terms of vehicles on a, on a parking lot or the number of beans in a bag. And what's it tell us? That one mole of a unit is that number of C atoms. One mole of that, same number of C atoms. It doesn't matter what it is. It's always that number of atoms. 6.022 times 10 to the 23. One mole of any element contains Avogadro's number of elements. That is the type of true-false question I might ask you. Okay? I'd say one mole of any element contains Avogadro's number of atoms of elements. And it would be true. So one molar element contains that number of 6.022 times 10 to the 23 atoms. A molecule contains 6.022 times 10 to the 23 molecules. An ion contains 6.022 times 10 to the 23 ions. A formula unit contains 6.022 times 10 to the 23 formula units. That's how it is with Avogadro. So if on an exam you see something that's kind of fishy and you say, He's asking about these units, or these number of fish, or stars in the sky. It's going to be what? One unit of that, or one, okay, one molecule is going to be Avogadro's number. So here, the number of particles in one mole of quantities. Note here, they're all Avogadro's numbers, table 7.1. Okay, one mole of aluminum, one mole of iron, one mole of water. Okay, one mole of vitamin C, one mole of sodium chloride. There it is, Avogadro's number. It converts things into to molecules. So Avogadro's number can be written as an equality, and therefore it's a convergence. So one mole equals that number of particles. So you can have moles per particles or particles per mole. And you know to use this according to your what? Dimensional analysis. And we've already worked through problems like this. So, here we have four moles of iron to atoms. So we have four moles of iron. We're looking for atoms of iron. So we, do our, we set up our, our uh, dimensional analysis. And we set up here the conversion factor. 
malt, and we make sure we put the, the species so we can track it and not lose and not make a mistake. And there you have it. If we convert molecules of CO2 to moles, we start with molecules, we're looking for moles. We set up the dimensional analysis, which you've already done in your work session, so you know how to do it now, and you're good to go. You finished chapter seven. Between the work session and the lecture, that's it for chapter session.